Last week, I noted that the Senate Democrat budget was one of the most extreme, most unbalanced pieces of legislation we've ever seen. One that would never balance, ever. And one that would have a devastating uh, outcome on the middle class. I said its centerpiece is a $1.5 trillion tax hike. That would be the largest in American history. Some on the other side have argued with the $1.5 trillion figure. They say their budget only contains a $1 trillion tax hike, which is a stunning and telling admission in itself. Just months after Democrats got hundreds of billions in new taxes, they now freely admit their intention to hit Americans with another trillion dollars in tax hikes. But in reality, it would be more than that since their budget envisions $1.5 trillion in new revenue. But while the Democrats' math may be fuzzy, their intentions are unmistakable. Their massive tax hike would cost the average middle-class family thousands in lost income and lost opportunity. And despite that massive hit to working families, the Democrats' budget would still not ever, ever balance. But that's just one of the reasons this budget is so destructive to the middle class. Take spending, for example. Americans know that a good way to create jobs and increase economic growth is to balance the budget and put our massive national debt on a path to elimination. Yet the Senate Democratic budget would actually increase spending by more than a half a trillion dollars. Increase spending by half a trillion dollars. Put another way, Democrats want to take another half a trillion dollars out of the economy on top of all the money they'd take out with their tax increase and put it into the hands of Washington bureaucrats and politicians to spend or waste as they see fit. And their budget would balloon the debt by 42%, increasing every American's share to a whopping $73,000. They want to grow the government at the expense of the economy, and that's just not the way to create jobs or get the private sector moving. In fact, some estimate, <clears throat> by some estimates, this budget could result in more than 600,000 lost jobs if enacted. And of course, the Democrat Senate budget won't prevent Medicare and Social Security from going bankrupt. Not going to prevent Medicare and Social Security from going bankrupt. So here's what we'd get with a Democrat budget. A massive tax hike and thousands less for middle class families. Massive tax hike. Number two, half a trillion dollars more in big government spending. Number three, 42% more debt with each American owing $73,000. And more than 600,000 lost jobs. Here's what we won't get. We won't get balance, just more and more unbalanced tax hikes. We won't get the kind of deficit reduction our country needs, just more spending to enrich the Washington establishment at the expense of Main Street. We won't get more jobs, or a better economy, or sensible reforms to prevent Medicare or Social Security from going bankrupt. And we certainly won't get a balanced budget. Not only does the Senate Democrat budget never balance, ever, but top Washington Democrats now say they simply don't care about balancing the budget anymore. Just don't care about that. Well, Americans do. A party that once cared about hardworking American families seems to have gone off the leftmost edge of the reservation with this budget. D.C. Democrats' priorities are just so far removed from the actual needs of middle-class Kentuckians and Americans who continue to struggle in the Obama economy. I appreciate that the Senate majority has finally decided to put its ideas on paper. It took four years, four years, to get a budget from them and we now know why it took so long, because their ideas are just so unbalanced and so extreme, so destructive to the economy Americans want us to fix. We can help foster the conditions necessary to make the economy healthier and create more jobs, but only if Washington Democrats finally reach across the aisle to address America's real concerns in a truly balanced way. <coughs> I hope that will ultimately happen because it's time to start making divided government work for the American people who elected it.
and it's time to grow the economy, not the government.